Now you're doing a lot of wholesaling. You're doing many fix and flips as well. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know about many, but we just started to do some more. I think last year we completed last year. We're doing eight fix and flips. That's solid. Yeah. And then, um, this year we want to do about 20 fix and flips this year. Um, and then increase the wholesale business and stuff. Um, you know, we just saw that the margins are so great right now. If you buy a good fix and flip deal in a, in a decent yeah. area, like people are overpaying and the margins are nice. So it's just a perfect vertically integrated business to wholesale. Um, it takes a little bit more management and it takes a little bit more, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole different business per se. It is. It's yeah. a very nice marriage when you can have your wholesale business feeding you discounted off market deals mm -hmm. and you can cherry pick the ones you like and the areas you yeah. like, or, or you have realtors or contractors, et cetera. I mean, it's a per it's a, such a nice marriage. It is. It is. You want to be able to do that and pick and choose which ones you want to say buy and hold as a rental or to fix and flip. You know, it's a, it's a different animal. One of the things that we run into over the last year and a half, probably two years going on close to, and that probably more a year and a half, supply chain issues, which I'm sure you know of too, which delay the rehabs. So what we've done as much as we can possibly do, especially in these different markets where we're in, we try to get everything that's in stock at Home Depot or Lowe's. So we're gonna do like a, a nice base grade stuff, nothing high end. Now you can get put new subway tile in there, backsplash and stuff. You can still do the granite countertops, but we're going with like the in stock cabinets as much as we can. Not on high end uh, deals, but on on your basic, you know, 250K and under, let's say deal in different parts of the country. So we've had to adjust even on that front, which I'm sure you're gonna run into as you do more fix and flips. I'm sure you ran into them last year as well. Oh. Yes, yes, it's it's been interesting, but it's another thing that you got to pivot. You got to learn yeah. and and pivot. You know, once I saw the prices were going up, I just realized, okay, I need to make sure that the margins are high. I need to yeah. I need to adjust my repair numbers, or let me have a couple of training sessions in the month to share with our team what what I'm learning about re rehab and the numbers. So, hey, when you guys are analyzing these deals and coming up with your offer prices, hey, instead of putting 25k repairs for that house, now it's 37. You know, yeah. it's just, it is what it is. And, um, you know, so it's, it's a definitely a learning process. I mean, I think when people, sometimes they think about wholesale or real estate that it's, I think a, a lot of people don't treat it so much as a business per se. And that's fine if you're that, that you know, you're doing ones and twos. But mm -hmm. I think at some point, if you really do fix and flips and you're doing wholesale, you have to have some kind of um, business play, business plan, yeah. business strategy, instead of just going deal per deal. I think that's the Agreed. hard line. From hustler to business mindset it's not easy from like wholesale hustler to fix and flipper to like okay have a thing running it's, it's yes. not easy but but that uh that kind of led me there because I, I made i still make some of these mistakes all the time yeah and you know in business you're always gonna make mistakes no matter what you're gonna learn from them and get better with it but there will always be different mistakes we end up making over time there's still properties i end up losing money on occasion because i didn't see foundation issues or something come up here not too many of them, luckily, not wood, but occasionally it happens. So like on the rehabbing side, there's there's a good friend of mine. And actually, I, I kind of want to run through his program or run my little brother or sister. I'm going to end up hiring with me to go through his program. He has one of the best rehab processes I've ever seen, Roddy Graziano. And uh, I mean, just a system for everything, systematizes everything. So, like you said, turning it into a business and making it so you could literally hand it off to anybody, say, here, run it. And everything's based off this app. He has an app. Plus, he also has a regular spreadsheet on a computer you can use. So it's things like that that are definitely value adds that you can do to the business. I'll definitely share that with you if you yeah, want. Yeah, I want to write that down. That's, that's really interesting. It's it's tremendous good. stuff. And his app, I've seen it is it is really, really good. And he's, <laughs> he's a badass, man. He comes in. He's no nonsense guy. Baseball player like I was. Um, oh, yeah. You're a baseball player, too, which is great. So. He's just got that, you know, competitive drive in him, but man, he is passionate about rehabs and he's mm -hmm. building some different stuff with, with other people I know now from our mastermind, some programs and stuff. So I'll definitely put you in contact with him is his app is definitely worthwhile and his tra training program could be really worthwhile, especially if you have somebody that you want to have hired, dedicated to be handling rehabs for you. Yeah. That, that's like my, one of my yearly goals for this year is, is build that system and and build a leader to be able to run the the projects. Currently, it's me and my assistant, and it's uh, it's not the clean. I know it, it becomes crazy, right? And then you're yeah. kind of constantly chasing the day. So we're in the exact same process. You are here, and we do a lot out of state. So I've hired a couple who are partnering with us on a couple of deals. We're testing them out and see how things go. So far, 
really, really good with what we've done here. So the more we do, the uh, the more that are successful like this, the more I'm going to have them do and bring them on the operation side and just have them run things. They're really good at getting the details done and at contacting the agents, contacting the um, contractors and stuff. And that's what I need because that's a time suck, as you know. Turning your utilities on, I can't stand. It's one of my least favorite things to do in this oh. business. Sometimes you could be hours turning utilities on. <laughs> just drives me nuts. And then remembering to turn them off again, right? <laughs> yeah.